60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing two pedals from Amumu, which is a company that has sent me ukuleles before. Here's one of them. I like the ukulele enough to keep it around. Um, they typically do acoustic instruments and various accessories that go with acoustic instruments, but seems like they are interested in getting into the pedal game. It is an import brand, import from China, I'm assuming. But we have the Power Lifter Distortion here and the Hot Summer Overdrive. Interestingly, um, you might be used to watching my affordable board videos that have a lot of import pedals that are very, very cheap. They're going for a full standard price on these. I think they're like 159, 169, something like that. So there's the power lifter distortion. Interesting, we have a double manual here in the box. One side for the power lifter and one side for the hot summer. Comes with a bunch of stickers in the box. You buy the stickers and they come with a free pedal. <laughs> All right, now here's the hot summer overdrive. Same layout format for both of them, a switch and then three knobs. I'm gonna cruise the manual really quick and then I'll plug in and get started. All right, all set up and ready to go. I'm gonna start off with a Telecaster style guitar. This is my Jennings Navigator. I thought that would be a good fit for an overdrive pedal. I don't know what style overdrive this is gonna be. Is it gonna be a tube screamer? Is it gonna be like a lighter, crispier sort of thing, like a DOD 250? I'd love that. Is it gonna be like a blues driver or something like that? I have no idea, but it has a built-in compressor here. So compressor and then compressor cut on the other side. Level, tone, and gain. Let's check it out. Here's my dry signal before I get started. Here we go, hot summer overdrive. What's it gonna sound like? of some of these controls. There it is with the gain all the way up. Sounds like it goes all the way clean. clean.
like that it goes all the way transparent if you want. You can dial in some thickness. It gives you a little bit of like a high, mid, nasal kind of character on some of the settings, which can be great for cutting through the mix, obviously. Uh, it seems like it gets plenty of gain on it. Like it's not turning into a distortion, but it gets plenty hot enough. <laughs> On the compressor setting, at least, it has like a fattening feel. Like it fattens up your signal a bit. this no compressor setting. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brighter and louder and buzzier. Sound. I was not expecting to hear something like that. It's got this torn speaker quality to it that I was not expecting at all. I like that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that kind of sound from this pedal. That's the sort of sound that I really like. I like that kind of broken, torn speaker, uh, unpredictable sort of loose grit. I think most guitarists would prefer this more traditional sort of sound from the compressed side. But over here, that's where I live. You get all those tight and bright little peaky broken up bits and they just hit reverbs and stuff like that in really fun ways. What do you guys think? Which side do you prefer? I, 
<laughs> I think I really like that bright and crispy side. That's where I live. I'm, I'm weirdly excited about this now. <laughs> I want to try it on my live pedal board. That's the sort of sound where it sounds like a bit much. It's crispy and bright and gritty and torn sounding, but once it, you know, makes its way through reverbs and delays and even the amp and the speaker and stuff like that, those sorts of things tend to be filtered out in an actual rig sort of setting um, where the left side of the switch kind of simulates what would be happening uh, if you were hitting a hot amp with this. Like if you're hitting a hot like tube compressed amp, a lot of that spikiness is gonna get smoothed out or added to the dirt of the amp. And that kind of simulates what's going on when you do that with it on the left side here. So if you're recording in a more low volume environment, you can't push your tubes, it's gonna sound similar with it on the left side as to if you have it on the right here running into a really hot tube amp. That's you know, my thoughts on the matter anyways. I didn't check out the full range of the tone control, so let's do that now. It almost has a fuzz quality to it. That's a little spicy. That's really bright. Now for the compressed side, all the way dark. was even brighter. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of high frequencies on tap. Oof. Should have been wearing earplugs for that one. On to the power lifter distortion. I think I'm strong enough for this one. So we have a two-way switch here that goes between shred and dynamic. We're starting out on shred. I have a feeling I'm gonna wanna switch guitars here in a second. one tapping riff and that's it guys I'm gonna grab some humbuckers I don't play the SG enough let's see if it'll work out for this demo
that's interesting. It is definitely a distortion. I wonder what its lineage is. I wonder, you know, at its core, what it's based on. I'm picking up a bit of a rat vibe to it, but it's not, it's, it's definitely not trying to be, you know, like a pure rat sort of sound. Like it's not a rat clone directly, but it might have, you know, the soul of a rat in there. <laughs> sounds at low gain is making me think rat. I could be totally wrong. It does a great job of sounding huge. gotten into the dynamic setting yet. That was the shred setting. Did you hear all that shredding I did? <laughs> I am not a shredder at all. Oh, I can't even really fake shredding. Oh, that was embarrassing. All right, the dynamic setting now. Interesting. The shred side sounds more compressed in a way, but also brighter in a way. We get more of a low mid woofiness with the dynamic side. <laughs> do a pretty decent job of cleaning up with the gain all the way down. I'm sensing a gain filtering going on across the switch, but I think there's also a big EQ shift going on. Like I think it might be mid scooped on the shred setting, which would make sense. Combine them. with 
the tone completely sucked out on the overdrive going into a bright distortion. It gets heavy and creamy. <laughs> I want to hit him with baritone. Amazingly, the uh, resale value of these Squire baritones has been climbing. They didn't, they didn't make enough of them when they launched this line. All the other guitars in the Squire Paranormal line got multiple colors and there was enough of them for everyone that wanted one to buy one. The baritone sold out too quick, in my opinion. Um, I think they sold for $3.99 new. That's what I paid for. Mine, anyways, I think. And now they're climbing up north of $800. Bucks. It might be because um, that Antigua Jazzmaster baritone the Squire made has been climbing in value. And so this is following suit. Those things go for stupid money though, like two grand or something. Can you believe it? A $2,000 Squire. The future's weird. It's kind of gritty and spiky. Again, I feel like this overdrive on the non-compressed setting, it kind of wants to be a fuzz. It's kind of pushing that direction. side.
It seems to handle the baritone in a really fun way. I like the spikiness uh, paired with that lower range instrument there. It might be a good overdrive for a bass guitar considering it goes so light. Pretty fuzzy. be a good bass overdrive. All right, the power lifter with baritone now. Did I just invent a new genre of metal? I don't know what I down tuned to, but it is floppy. Floppy core? Is that what we'll call it? stupid. All right. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about these pedals. I really like the bright and spiky torn speaker sound of the Hot Summer on that comp cut setting. I think on the compressed setting, you get a fairly decent kind of smooth and creamy tube screamish sort of overdrive sound. That's how I'm interpreting it anyways. The power lifter distortion, it sounds like a great distortion to me. I don't use distortion a lot but it seems to be living in this very kind of like modern take on a rat territory with some sort of gain and EQ sculpting across the switch here. It gets plenty heavy, it gets plenty thick and sustaining, and also cleans up pretty dang well with lower gain settings there, which makes me think that yeah, it's, it shares some lineage with a rat. 
What do you guys think though? That's what's most important. What you think of these pedals. 169 bucks, I think. Let me pull up the site. Yeah, 169 direct from the site. Yeah, I want to read your comments. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked. Huge thanks to Amumu for sending these pedals out to me. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.